Galaxies. All the objects we've explored so far in our quick tour lie within our own Milky Way galaxy. Beyond our galaxy lies the rest of the universe, with untold billions more galaxies as far as the largest telescopes can see. Now, each distant galaxy contains tens or hundreds of billions of stars, but the galaxies are so far away that they appear very faint in our sky. With your unaided eye, you can only see two nearby galaxies in the constellation Triangulum and Andromeda. These are the farthest things you can see without a telescope. When looking at the Andromeda galaxy, the light we see actually left that galaxy more than two million years ago. And southern observers can see two small satellite galaxies in the Milky Way. We call these the Large and Small Magellanic Clouds. With a good-sized amateur telescope and a dark sky, you can see literally thousands of galaxies in the northern and southern hemispheres. You'll get the best views of galaxies in the spring and the fall when the night sky of the Earth points out from the plane of our own galaxy and out into intergalactic space. Some, like the Whirlpool Galaxy, have the same beautiful spiral shape as our own Milky Way, but there are others like the monstrous M87 galaxy, which are round or elliptical and featureless, but they contain more than a trillion stars. Celestial Events Some of the sights in the night sky are visible for only a very short time. Meteors are pebble-sized pieces of space debris that fall through the Earth's atmosphere and burn up in a few seconds. They ignite a bright trail of light across the sky. Look up on any night and you might see two to three meteors per hour. But sometimes, at specific times throughout the year, the Earth passes through the path of a comet which has left behind a trail of debris as it orbits the Sun. When this happens, we're treated to a meteor shower. During a meteor shower, you may see dozens or even hundreds of meteors per hour. One of the best meteor showers each year occurs around August 12th when the Earth passes through the path of Comet Swift Tuttle. This shower is called the Perseids since the trail of meteors all appear to originate in the constellation Perseus. Comets are more rare than meteors. There might be half a dozen comets visible each year, though they're usually faint enough to require a telescope to see really well. Every 10 years, on average, a comet appears that's bright enough to be easily seen with the naked eye. Comet Hale-Bopp in 1997 and Comet McNaught in 2007 were great examples of this. Comets are remnants of the formation of the solar system, dark balls of ice and dust that linger beyond the orb orbit of Pluto, occasionally plunging into the inner solar system where they're set aglow by the heat and radiation from the sun. Even more rare are stars that suddenly flare up in brightness by hundreds or thousands of times. These stars are called nova, which can easily be caused by a number of things, including deposits of material from one star onto another until the latter suddenly ignites and brightens. A supernova is an even more spectacular event. It's caused by the detonation of a massive star that's run out of fuel and collapsed in upon itself. The explosion of such a star often outshines an entire galaxy for a period of a few weeks. Astronomers estimate a star in our own galaxy explodes every 50 years. Several supernova in other galaxies are visible each year in large telescopes. Occasionally, these extragalactic explosions are discovered by backyard astronomers. <laughs>